Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah 66. We're going to look at verse 13. Isaiah 66, verse 13. The title of the message is Motherhood of God. Motherhood of God. Isaiah 66, 13. Motherhood of God. The Bible says, As one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Dear Father, thank you for another opportunity to gather and praise your name, Lord. Thank you for the fellowship opportunity that we had yesterday, and thank you for keeping us safe, Lord. Father, today is Mother's Day. Father, thank you for all the mothers we have, and uh, thank you for everything that they've done for us, Lord. Uh, whatever kind of, um, Lord, I'm prepared to please uh, be with us today. And as Pastor Jay preaches the sermon that you gave him, help uh, fill him with the Holy Spirit, yes. help him to preach the Lord, help Amen. us to listen, keep yes. our ears and our hearts open so that we can really apply everything to our lives, Lord. And whether we be tired or hurt or uh, distracted or anything, help us to focus on church yes. today, Lord. Focus on you. Help us to yes. keep our eyes on you at all Amen. times, Lord. Be with us and in Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. 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 Motherhood of God. Needless to say, you know, look around you, you know, mothers. You are here because of, you know, your mothers. But we know that creator of the universe is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And but the thing is, you know, God has to use mothers for you to be here today, for me to be here today. And when we look at the Bible, Every member of Godhead is male. We get that out of the way, right? You know, we're not out there, you know, we're liberals or any of those, you know, Bible correctors, you know, those scholars say, you know, God is a woman. God is not a woman, you know? God is a male, 100%. And then we have Godhead, Trinity, right? God the Father is male. God the Son is male. And God the Holy Spirit is male as well. So, you know, we're not here to be anything other than what the Bible says. Then we get that out of the way. There shouldn't be any questions, you know, because that's what the Bible says. There's no argument because that's what the Bible says. God had attributes in him that he was able to communicate to women that he didn't communicate to men in the same way. So that just tells you there is a difference between a man and woman. There is a difference between father and mother. Yes. Male cannot be a mother. Right? Female cannot be a father. Right. You could try to be like a, you know, try. But physiologically, you can't. I think one of the saddest person that I constantly hear in the internet is a person named Ellen Page. I don't know if you heard of that person, AKA Elia Page, right? If you don't know about her, good. You don't need to really. But one thing that tells you about this society is that she was born as a female and now she's supposedly transitioned to a male. But she is the most miserable looking person I've ever seen in my life. That just tells you. Man is a man, woman is a woman. Amen. No need to change what God has given you yes. to be. Amen, that's, right. that's it. You know. In Genesis 127, the Bible says, male and female created he them. Amen. So, right off the bat, mothers, you are very important in your own role. Amen. Fathers, you are important in your own role. Amen. And you have to understand each person's responsibility. Especially as a Christian, that's why it's so important that you know your roles. And then you be faithful to your roles. Amen. That's why there is always a hierarchy 
there's organization, especially when you look at the Word of God. When Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to come back as dictator. Right. You know, authoritarian, because that's how the structure needs to be. At home, right? Amen. Father is the head of the household, and there's the mother, and there's the children. Then you could see how big a role mother has. I mean, in between the father and in between the children. That's why a lot of times fathers are many times, you know, kind of awkward with their children, right? And I don't know about a lot of cultures, but especially in Asian culture. And I think, you know, Hispanic cultures too. And actually, except for some of the, you know, very, very liberal, you know, American culture out there or European culture out there, many of the cultures, father figures are like the tough, right? Men are the leaders. And a lot of times, you know, they don't really get to speak with their daughters. You know, male ch children, they're like, yeah, you know, we get to play sports. We get to talk about, you know, manly things, right? Mm -hmm. But it gets awkward between, you know, father and daughters as they grow up. Because father can talk about certain of the, you know, woman issues that the daughters are going through, right? Yeah. It's natural. That's why you have the mother in between. But funny thing about mother is that mothers can connect to both, you know, son and daughters. It's a special ability that mothers have. And as mothers, you have to understand and appreciate the fact that, you know, God has given me this special role within me where I can be that connector to both my ch children, right? Whether it's male or female, and the fa father. Right? I mean, if you don't do your job, what's going to happen? The household gets divided, household becomes chaotic, and it doesn't become a happy household. Many times, obviously, you know, male have a lot of things to do with it, but joyful home comes from joyful mothers. When mothers are joyful, you know, homes are usually joyful, right? And of course, we're not talking about, you know, other circumstances where your father is a drunkard, you know, doing certain wicked stuff. Of course, that household will never have peace. But however, if it's a normal household and mothers are joyful, then that household becomes a blessed, happy household. And a lot of times, children will reflect mother's attitude. Mothers spend more time, many times, with their children. And they say, your children are the reflection of your parents. I go a little bit deeper. Your children are a reflection of their mothers, many times. Because children will spend many, many more hours, usually, especially when they're growing up, with yes. their mothers. Because, you know, there's studies out there by, you, by the time you're five, by the time you're 10, you know, in between, your character is fixed. You become who you are a lot of times. The what I see you right now is already formed by the time you're already 10, right? I mean, if you were a selfish brat, you're going to be selfish brat right now, especially if you haven't been saved and, you know, changed through the Word of God, yes. right? No, if you've been really a nice, generous, you know, good kid because of your you know, parents and mothers, especially upbringing, you're going to be that person, very considerate, you know, unselfish. And those things are all fixed by the time you're like, you know, kids between five to 10. Then if a mother is a bad example, then what's going to happen? Children turn out to be pretty bad as well. We have very many examples, right? Nero, you know, that, that Roman dictator, very, very bad king, emperor from the past. Nero's mother was a murderer. So he turned out to be one too. Lord Byron's mother was haughty and proud. And he turned out the same way, haughty and proud. Now we get to the modern days, right? Rose Kennedy. You heard of Kennedy family? Yes. So Rose Kennedy, the mother of John F. Kennedy, was a spoiled brat. 
And what happened? She turned out nine spoiled breads after her, right? But whatever happened to them, you know, unfortunate, some get assassinated, you know, accidents and everything, they were spoiled breads. So Sir Walter Scott's mother was fond of poetry and he became a poet, right? The same storms and, you know, tempests that sink nations and states around us, these are coming from all families that sink as well. Yes. When families go down, when families are shipwrecked, the nation usually goes down that way. Yes. What do you think our nation, you know, is losing morals, right? right? They have inability to decide between right and wrong, especially young people. I mean, we have what, Generation Z, Generation Y, you know, even millennials, you know, what is it like between 1980s, early 1980s to 2000? And millennials are funny. A lot of millennials who were born after 90 or people who were born before 90, they don't want to be associated with people who were born after 90, right? But they know that their values are not as good, you know, not as strong. And they think of them as a breads too, spoiled breads. And Generation Z, they're extra level spoiled breads. So you can see it like this. Veterans generation sees baby boomers as spoiled breads. Baby boomers look at it as a Generation X as a, another spoiled bread. Yeah. And then it goes on and on and on. And can you imagine? I don't even know when the Generation Y, I mean, is it Y or something, you know, new thing starts. They are the biggest spoiled breads. And in between, they're all clumped together. And all these happen, why? Because the families are sinking. Yes. And they allow the media, they allow the TV, they allow the cell phones to rule their family. Right. Right? Sure. The worst thing that a mother can do when they're raising a child is just take out a tablet or a phone and let the kid just watch it. Yeah. And then you do not do anything about it. And then they become desensitized. Right. And then what happens? Now they become a killers at school. Yes. They, they watch this all the time. Parents are letting him do it, so kids think that it's okay. So they bring a gun to school. What is it? Like six-year-old brings a gun to school and starts shooting people, yeah. right? And by the time you're 13, man, you're already good to kill many, many people, yeah. like happening in Serbia and many other parts of the world. And I, of course, America is always included. And all these are happening, and we could attribute it to main reason is because homes are broken. Yes. And homes are broken. Obviously, many of the responsibilities falls to the fathers. Yes. But many of the responsibility falls to mothers as well. Yes. I know, I completely understand. If you grew up in a single you know, parent family, especially single mother, it's one of the toughest things to do. I mean, I mean me and my brother grew up in a single mother, right? You know, majority of our you know, adolescent days. And it's really hard for mothers to keep that balance. But if you're in that situation, you know, mothers and sisters or anybody, you have to make sure that you keep that balance. If you don't keep that balance, when that balance isn't there, then your family, unfortunately, will skew towards, it will go heavier towards the devil's way, right. the world's way. One thing that's the hardest thing for a parent to do, especially for a mother, especially for a single mother, is disciplining their children. They already feel bad. I feel bad. I mean, I grew up that way. When you see children who grow up without the father, they can't get the enough of the father's love, and they can't get the discipline from the father. Mothers have to discipline the children. But they weren't created to discipline their children like that. Their role is to what? Be a comfort. Right. And of course, you know, Catholic Church turns it around and makes our Lord Jesus Christ like the evil dictator. And you have to go through Mary to get to him. I mean, they don't know the motherhood of God. They don't know this, 
you know, doctrine. That's why they deceive millions and billions of people together to burn in hell together. Right. Then, if you see these things, you have to understand, not just mothers, but everybody who's listening, you have to be balanced. Because God is a balanced being. Amen. I mean, if you want to understand motherhood of God, you know, God understands the attributes of both mother and father, and then he is balanced that way. Then if you want to be like that, and if you understand that God, if you follow that God, if you follow the God of the Bible, then you have to be balanced. Amen. Again, you know, it's not just about the mothers. Everybody has to be balanced. Yes, sir. That's why if you, if you know right and wrong, you have to deal with right and wrong in the Bible way. Yes. If your children are not living according to the word of God, and they live under your household, even if they're out of your household, you have to let them know what they're doing is wrong. Yes. If you don't say it, you're digging their grave deeper and deeper. Right. Romans 8, 13 says, if we live after the flesh, you shall die. You're letting your children live after their flesh, live after the world, live after the devil. They're, you're helping them dig the grave deeper and deeper and deeper. And before you know it, you know what's the saddest thing that could happen to a parent? Their children dies before them. Yes. That's like the worst thing for a parent to see, to see their children, you know, die before them. But before you start blaming God, before you start blaming the world, before you start blaming everything, you got to start looking at yourself. Amen. I mean, have I been the one feeding that child yes. to become who he is, be a destructive person to himself or herself, then as a Bible believer, mother, father, anybody, you may not be responsible for kids who don't follow your example, right? But you are responsible for the example. You have to understand that the examples that I give to my children they might not follow, but you're responsible for that example. Yes. If a child goes, hey, mom, how do I get to my school? You show the example. Go straight this road, and then you get to that school. You've done your job. But child decides, to, no, I don't like that road. It's too straight. I'm going to go to the left. I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to go back. I'm going to do all these detours. Trouble. And then they hit the troubles of the life and everything. But you've done your job. Yes. You gave that example. You gave that right example. You gave that Bible example. So as a Christian, as mothers, fathers, everybody, you have to be responsible for your examples. Amen. Someone's watching you. Someone is. Yes. Even a little children, someone's watching you. Your friends are watching you. I mean, even right now, right? I mean, if you can't pay attention, someone's watching you not being paying attention because they can't pay attention. <laughs> and it becomes like a domino effect, right? Uh, it's a funny story. Like someone goes, yeah, you know, I saw this brother. He was always sleeping, right? Like, during the you know, Bible study and preaching. Like, how do you know they're sleeping? Because you weren't paying attention either, right? And someone's looking at you, and they're like talking amongst themselves. Yeah, man, that guy doesn't pay attention. He's keep on looking at somebody, right? And that person is doing that. So it becomes that, you know, domino effect. You are an example. And as a Bible believer, you have that responsibility. No matter what you think, no matter, you know, how little you think you are, you know, one of the characteristics of motherhood is what? They, mothers, attend to little things. They're very detail-oriented. God is very detail-oriented. Fathers cannot really emulate that too much. For example, if your child stumbles and falls, what do fathers do? Are you okay? You got to be okay. They're done. When mothers see their children fall, they start panicking. They start screaming. Yeah. 
what happened? You know, and then they start calling everybody. They call their husband. Hey, come over here. Her husband's like, it's okay. You know, that's how they grow up. You know, they get hurt here and there. But no, mothers have to run to their child, bring the whole first aid kit, right? Bring Neosporin, alcohol, everything. And then they have to, and then, then it's like, it might even be a, just a little scrape. But to them, it's the biggest scrape. Yes. To them, it's the biggest hurt. And they tend to their children, right? Amen. And, you know, even if the kid is crying, you know, daddies are usually, right, you know, you got to suck it up. Yeah. Especially up. if it's a son, right? Hey, yeah, son, you got to suck it You're up, right? Dead. You know, hey, imagine, like, you know, we played soccer yesterday. If mothers or wives see that their husband fall while sliding to get the ball, they start panicking. Oh, man, you know, I don't want my husband or my child to get hurt. But if daddy see them, they're like, ah, it's okay. You know, it's just a, you know, it's a dirty clothes. That's it, right? You know, he'll walk it off. You know, she'll walk it off. So the difference between man and woman in that sense is that mothers have a way of attending to the little details. And God is the same way. God pays attention. He attends to every little detail out there. Amen. And aren't you grateful that our God has that motherhood characteristic in him? Amen. Where he, he cares about all your details, right? Yes. If you're going through any hardships in your life, if you need someone to talk to, that's why children, I mean, Think about it, daughters, right? Are you going to call your dad and start talking about, hey, you know, I have this issue in my life, right? Your conversation never goes five to ten minutes. Maybe one or two minutes and you're done. Like, daddy goes, oh, I mean, if they're Christian, dad, I'll pray for you, you know? Maybe go a little bit deeper. But, you know, but mothers, they will talk to you for hours and hours because they could relate. You know, as a woman, and they have attention to details. But think about it. Our God has that same details. You have no one to talk to, you could go to God. Amen. You have something to talk about, like you go to God, yes. right? Every detail, little detail, you know, the Lord's going to listen to you. Amen. I mean, the Lord's going to care for you for it. It's not going to be like you and me. Hey, you know, suck it up, walk it off. You gotta be fine, right? Right. You know, no more crying, you know. But our God has that sympathy. Yes. Amen. He will listen to you. Amen. And He will empathize with Thank you. you Lord. Because Lord Jesus Christ went through all the types of temptations and trials. Yes. Not just what males go through, what females go through. Yes. Characteristically, all of it. Then you actually have someone. When your husband can understand you, when your daddy or son or nobody can understand you, but you have someone who understands you from A to Z, top to bottom, everything. Then as mothers and as just being a Christian, why don't you go to him? Yes. When you need to talk to someone about little details, you don't need to go to the, you know, Dr. Jimmy, the psychologist. You know, Jane Doe, the psychiatrist, all they're going to do is prescribe you some medication so that you'll be high, you'll be, you know, kind of, you know, yeah, so that you don't care about anything. Yes. And then you're going to be addicted to that medication. Right. So that they could prescribe you more and more. Agenda. That's not the person you need to go to. Right. You go straight to the Lord. Amen. And you, when you go to the Lord, He'll listen. He'll listen to your troubles. Right? He'll listen to all the things that you're going through because you might go through some indignities in your life, slights, you know, you might go through insults, you might go through all these, you know, things that just eating your life, all these bitter feelings, right? That wouldn't mean much to other people. Because sometimes, you know, things happen, it doesn't really mean much to me. Maybe, maybe because, you know, as a man, that's the character that you have. But even the little tiny things, many times, means to women. 
I mean, that's something that men have to understand, right? Every little thing can mean bigger than anything else in the world to that woman. Then, as a man, you have to be more compassionate. You have to be more sensitive. You have to be more patient. But if you don't have that luxury right now, you know, sisters, you go straight to the Lord. You go to the Lord and talk to him. He's going to listen. Hey, let's talk about your insults. Let's talk about your indignities. Let's talk about all the slights that you're going through in your life. It's better to go to the Lord, I'm telling you, Amen. than go to another woman, another sister, another people and start gossiping about it. Yes. It's not going to work. It just creates, you know, avalanche. Yes. Right? And then once it falls down, once those avalanches happen, you can't stop. Until it finishes. Yes. And then, of course, along the way, you're going to have casualties. So you don't want that to happen. If you understand motherhood of God, you understand God's you know, attention to details. And if you understand that, you know, mothers, you know, if your loved ones can understand you, go to them. And you have to cry, you cry. Lord knows your problems and trials. I mean, sometimes men, especially, you know, we're talking about mothers, you know, men become very insensitive because they don't know how to handle it. Amen. Right? They just don't, yes. right? Because we're not women. That's why sometimes it's so weird and downright dumb and idiotic to say, you know, you see this man out there like, you know, I'm a, I'm a woman. I know exactly how you feel. No, you don't. You don't. You just talk, try to talk like them. And then, you know, that's all you try to dress like them. Now you're transitioning to them. But you're not. Right? You're the first person if, you know, someone cuts you off on the street, you're going to be the one who acting like that big macho man. Yeah. Right? I mean, so it's not going to work. Then in that case, think about it. As a Bible believer, you and I have that special privilege to go to the Lord. Yes. And mothers, I mean, who better to understand you than God? Right. Right? He's the one who could best understand you. That's why... And I'm not saying husbands are dumb and stuff. A lot of times they are. Yes, don't sir. go to him first. <laughs> Even to my wife, don't come to me first. Right? Go to the Lord first. Yes. Foundation always have to be the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you know? I might have IQ of, you know, one trillion. But if you come to me before the Lord, it's not going to work. Amen. You always go to the Lord first. Right? That's why afterwards, then Lord's going to set it up for you. Yeah. Lord listens to all your prayers. Right. Instant prayers. You know how you can have joy, mothers? Because you can go to the Lord in this instant prayers. Someone that who's going to listen to you. Someone who's hearing you. I mean, same thing goes for the man as well, right? You know, you want to keep that joy in your life? Go to the Lord in instant prayer. I mean, instant, right? You don't know what to say right now? Go to the Lord right now. Amen. Lord, help me what to say. Like Nehemiah prayer. You have to do it. Yes. And another thing that God, you know, you, all these mothers and mothers in here and listening, where God is like a mother, is that he has a special heart for every single children. Amen. Whether they're healthy, unhealthy. Yes. Whether they are smart, not smart, right? Whether, you know, they're even handicapped or not. Yes. Mother's love for their children, you can never take it away. No. I mean, there are certain times, you know, a lot of children are thrown away from household because when parents find out that Maybe they have, you know, illness and sickness, yes. right? 
even mental issues, right? But mothers have that special place in their heart for their children, Amen. right? They might be in wheelchairs, their brains messed up, and all those things. But mothers will love them no matter what. I don't know about fathers, right? I mean, fathers should, right? But mothers, they have that innate characteristic and ability, right? Because for mothers, if my child is different from other folks, it doesn't matter. That's still the most lovable child to them, right? Yes. I mean, I will, one of the stories that, you know, there was a handicapped daughter, and one time she was growing up and got to see other girls. And then she noticed she wasn't as pretty like the other girls at school. And she asked her mother, you know, what, how come God didn't make me like the other pretty girls out there? And the mama said, you know, God hasn't finished making you yet, honey. And that's the truth. Amen. There's truth in that. Mothers will not suddenly go and tell their daughter, hey, yeah, you're ugly. No. <laughs> I mean, maybe when they're playing around, but no, you know. I mean, if, if daughter's going through, you know, those serious things, they're going to be like, hey, it's okay. You know, you're still the prettiest girl yes. in my eyes, right? And men might lie, right? Right, just to get out of the conversation, right? No, but not mothers. They genuinely mean every word they say. That's why you have to understand. Lord, just like a mother, has a special heart for every single person who gets saved. Man, you might have, you know, very, very, maybe you can't walk. You can't walk spiritually right now. All you could do is crawl, right? He has a special heart for you, right? You can't get up. You know, you can't go on. You feel like you can't go on. Lord has a special place for you. Man, you feel like you don't have limbs anymore, right? Just like how a mother will have the unconditional love for a child who loses their limbs in the battle, who gets burned in their body 90%. Same love, however they look. Lord will have the same love for you no matter what, then you have someone, right, who will never forsake you, just like your mother won't forsake you. And there are crazy mothers out there. You know, you smart Alex out there. What about her? What about that? You know, they're just, you know, odd people, weird cases. That's not normal. world makes you think that's normal. That's not. You know, Bible says in Psalms 27.10, when my Father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Amen. Can a woman forget her suckling child, her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Amen. Lord never forgets. Amen. And mothers don't forget, you know. I mean, if mothers and child have some huge fighting and then they don't see each other for 20, 30 years. When they meet, mothers still have love for their child. Child might resent that person or whatnot, but mothers won't. That's how mothers are made. That's how mothers are. And think about the Lord, right? You might resent the Lord. You might even hate the Lord for what's going on in your life. You might go through so many issues, right? But Lord has a special place for you. Amen. And that is also going into it. Just like mother, God has a way of being patient with his child, with his children. You know, it's, it's, it's funny, but it's true. Men don't really have too much patience when it comes to a lot of things. You really have to learn to be patient. Yes. You know? But women, especially mothers, they have patience. You know, God gave them, you know, that special gift. Amen. That's how women can raise their children, right? They're crying all the time, right? They need food. 
You gotta change the diapers. You gotta do all of these things. But they actually love doing it. But I hear many cases where mothers were like, you know, I wish I had more children, you know, because they love raising their children. I mean, fathers too, hopefully, right? Yes. You know, or they might be too tired, right? Or whatnot. But mothers are different, and they have that patience. God has that patience, just like mothers, right? Think about it. We have a very, very famous case in the Word of God. Simon Peter, very impatient, right? I mean, he said, I'll die for you, Jesus Christ, right? He cut someone's ear off, and then the Lord says, you know what? Put up your sword, and he gets humiliated. He runs away, you know? He denies him thrice and even cusses, right? But the Lord put up with him, right? I mean, how would you do it, right? You know, if someone, you know, just denies you and then cusses about you, you're like, man, I'm going to teach that boy a lesson, you know, or something right, like that. No, but he was patient. Lord put up with him. Yeah. Man, so his discipleship was restored, and he had the power of the Holy Ghost, and then he preached. You know, you see in the Acts, and then, you know, there's even book, Right? First and second Peter. Because of the patience of the Lord. Mothers have that patience. Right? And you gotta appreciate your mothers for that, people. Because you all have mothers, right? Yes. You know? I mean, if they're in heaven right now, you know, praise the Lord for that as well, right? Amen. You're gonna see them again. But you have to be appreciative of mother's patience. If they weren't patient, man, imagine if your mom was like your daddy. You know, and like I'm talking about, you know, back in the day daddies, right? Not the soft spoken, let the kid rule over them daddies. But usually, you know, even if when they weren't safe, they had morals. You know, you you get your due punishment, right? Yes. But imagine if your mom was like that too. Where would you go, you know, after you make a mistake or if you, you know, cause trouble? No, you have nowhere to go. But you go to the mother. She's that comforter. And she's the one who will provide that comfort for you. I mean, even if when you don't even ask for it, you know, she sees you. And she knows what you're going through. And she comes and starts talking to you. I mean, that's, that's a motherly instinct I see. Somehow, they kind of see that, hey, something's going to arrive with my child. I got to go talk to that child, right? Fathers would be like, something's going to arrive with my child. I'm going to go. I'm going to pray for the child and then you know, leave it at that. But mothers will actually go out of the way and just do it because they have that patience because they have that love, special love for their children. And you know, if God has those qualities, you have to go to the Lord, right? Yes. Lord is so patient with you and I, right? And then he's showing you from his word how he patient he is. And how Simon Peter turned his life around like that. If you are going through certain things in your life, you have to go to the Lord. You have to go turn it around. Because the Lord's patient and patient. Right. However, don't abuse it either. We've seen too many children abuse their mother's patience. Amen. Right? Yes. And at the end, what do they do? They break their mother's heart. They're dead. They're in prison. Right? They're on the streets. That's the most selfish people out there when you're breaking your mother's heart. Yes. But when you think about that, if Lord has the same quality as a mother who's so patient with their child, don't you think you're breaking his heart too, constantly? Yes. Right. I mean, literally. He's so patient. 
hey, son, hey, daughter, you know, don't go that way anymore. Do this. Why? Lord, it's okay. I know what I'm doing. You break it. You sin consistently. Even though he's patient, you have to remember, even though your mothers are patient, along the way, you're breaking their heart. Right. I mean, that's the worst thing to do, but many of you never realize it until you lose your mother for good. Then you're like, oh, man, how terrible a child I've been in my life. Mm-hmm. And the judgment is that of Christ. You're going to be like, oh, Lord, how terrible child I've been as a child of God. I mean, what kind of testimony, what kind of legacy will you have when it comes to mother, right? Mother who, of God, it teaches us great lessons. Yes. You have someone who actually is balanced being, who can understand from big to small, from general high level to detail level, yes. who's patient, who knows that you are my special child, right? Wow, man. If you're not saved in the first place, anybody who's here who's not listening, then you're missing eternity out. Yes. You're missing that comfort for all eternity. You're missing that peace. If you reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll never find that joy no. as a mother. Hey. You won't understand motherhood of God. You will burn in hell. Get saved. But so you want to get saved. Amen. Right? You want to trust Christ, Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior right now and get saved Amen. and truly understand how to be a godly mother, understand motherhood of God, and as a Christian, be thankful for the motherhood of God. Let's pray. Amen.